choke, no joke. Yeah. It's choke, no joke. Let's go. Choke, no joke. Chicken choke, no joke. Choke, no joke. Nigga choke, no joke. I, I, I rap. I rap, and that was a joke. It was a big fucking joke. Pause. I'm not gonna cry right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a big joke. To who? To a lot of people. To a lot of people. So basically, I'm going to go from here. <laughs> Dancing, yada yada. The highs and lows that came with that. And then me and my partner, Francesca, happened to meet up with Big Les one day. You know, me and Big Les, we all, we all used to dance together. So. I don't know where I was, but Big Les comes up to me or comes up to Francesca. I, I forgot how the story goes, but Big Les was definitely a part of it. She introduces us to Steve Stout. What's up, baby? Um, and that ends up being my first manager. And this was Steve's first attempt to do a group called Move. And it was me, Francesca, Ayana Wilds Bay came along later. Um, Patty Laurent, she does clothes now. What's up, Patty? Me and Patty went to school together, too. So here we are. These girls and this other girl that I can't remember her name. She was like the lead singer. Patty was in the group on some French shit. That's what she did in the group. Like, I was like, yo, I was like the rapper. And Francesca was the rapper. And Steve is getting like kid and play to write stuff for us, you know what I mean? Kid and play is writing stuff for us. <laughs> and it just, it, you know what? I didn't want to sign management contracts. So somehow along the way it, it fell apart. And I wasn't a part of that situation anymore. And I uh, ended up getting with a, a guy named Dr. Freeze, Spider-Man Dr. Freeze. They did BBD point, you know, freeze. I'm sorry. Elliot Strait, he did, you know, the whole poison for BBD. I want to sex you up and call me bad. So, you know, the dramas that came along in this situation as well. You know, some things that I'm not, I don't even want to talk about, honestly, to be honest with you. I don't want to talk about everything, but I want to talk about enough for people to understand the, the, the roads and I will pick and choose in my brain sufficiently enough what's good enough to say. But to be, from Move, I ended up being in another group, Poison Ivy, which was uh, signed to Dr. Freeze, Freeze Entertainment. And that supposedly Spidey and Freeze were the ones with, you know, they're putting this group together. <laughs> and between egos amongst women, being in all these groups, the ego play that comes along, which trashes the whole moment, trashes it. Supposedly, we're supposed to we were supposed to get signed to Atlantic Records, and one of the girls dip off and don't want to be part of the group anymore. But she doesn't only dip from Brooklyn; she moves to California. So we're like, "Where's Francesca? We got a deal on the table! Oh my God, we're about to get signed to Atlantic Records." No, we're not, because we can't find one of the girls, and that, it just fell apart. So, things happen, get another gig, I start working at the accounting firm. But, you know, I know this is interesting as fuck, okay? This is really interesting. I go and get this job with the accounting firm, and... <laughs> It's a it's an entertainment accounting firm. I start off as a receptionist. See the bus, you definitely bus like me. Help you see the definitely bus like me. Help you for like fucking ever, forever. And then I'm like, fuck that. I'm gonna move up to you know. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna learn how to do people's money. I want to do that account management shit. So we got clients like Trackmasters, you know, Nori, Clue, you know. Prominent people. Steve was never a client, but see, you know, everybody, there's enough people up there. Everybody, Madonna, DMX, I mean, everybody was at this accounting firm. So, naturally, you're doing the, the work. It just goes to show you, I know the difference between 
an accountant and a rapper. I tell you that. I can say that. There's a difference between being a hot bond and a desk and working that shit. Can you imagine how I felt? I wanted to do this. I want to do this rap shit. But I'm counting rappers' money every goddamn day. I'm making a measly, maybe I'm reaching, with, maybe with a raise, I'll hit 30. I might hit 30,000 a year. And I'm looking at motherfuckers' checks that they get, they're getting 150 grand. I'm counting niggas' money that is, they're making a lot of fucking money. And track masters at that time, not for nothing, but those checks was more than 150, okay? And I'll say that, and shit was deep. And the mind game that I'm playing with myself, fuck it, and I'm like, you know, what do I do? Like, Jay-Z, client, like these are clients. These are real official clients. And I remember like when The Rock was, you know, started and doing their thing too and all that shit, man. And just niggas in the game and seeing the growth of niggas in the game, all that shit. But me saying to myself, I'm cool with these niggas. So when I remember when I first said to niggas that I'm, I'm a rap, you know? Like, I, first of all, my, my government, Rhonda Robinson, okay? So niggas know me as Rhonda. Maybe not Robinson, but they knew me as Rhonda. And here I go from, <laughs> you know, Clue, <laughs> what's up? No, I'm a rap. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Why you got to get that rap shit? You know what I mean? Not you, too. Not you, too. It was a lot of people's statements. You know what I mean? Not you, too. And it was like, yo, this is going to be crazy. I leave, um, I leave, I leave. Siegel fell into the accounting firm, the private and whatever. And I go over and I start working at Trackmasters for a period of time before my thing kicks off. Because, you know, at the, at the time, Tony Polk was handling Sony. Excuse me. He was handling Sony. And I was working for them because Steve was, you know, he, he was running Trackmasters. So Steve did me a solid from knowing him back in the day, just to sort of show you how life makes a 360, because I really needed that job. And Steve made that happen for me, and I ended up get working at Trackmasters for a little bit. And so here you got someone that dance, let's put you up to speed, dancing into <laughs> account, account person into rapper. No, not before rapper, after the accounting, working at a record company. And now that, you know, Tone and Polk, not to say that they were one of my accounts, but it was a joke. I remember, like, talking to them, like, yeah, I'm going to do this right. Yeah, you're going to sign a D-Dot, Crazy Cat. They was handling, you know, Columbia at the time, so Sony thing. And they was like, yo, you know, this almost smirkish. Like, yeah, you're going to do your thing. <laughs> you know, you're going to do that rap thing. It was always like, May, come on, why are you rapping? You're too cute <laughs> to rap. And that's a statement that I don't understand. What the fuck you want me to look like a fucking mompy? Like, I gotta look like a mompy to fucking rap because that that's goes along with the whole shit of the you being, I say it all the time, being struck out before you even got a chance to bat. I'm from Long Island. Bitches from the Burbs can't rap. What are you saying to me? Like, you know you want to just look at niggas and strangle them, but you think that knowing, you, you, you say, it's, it's who you know. It's who you know. If you know somebody, you can get on. I know a lot of motherfuckers. I know a lot of motherfuckers in this motherfucker. And I can count on less than three fingers how many motherfuckers helped me and how many other motherfuckers laughed a lot. So, I get down with that. That's, that's nigga for life. He, he put me down in a lot of ways. He schooled me on a lot of things. The teachings I got from him alone are impeccable, and no one ever could take that away from me. I'm so much fucking smarter. I'm so much quicker. I'm so much wiser, and I so much, I so much know more now how to do it. If I had, what they say, if I knew then what I know now, it probably would be a different situation. But, you know, coming from that, we start the whole Crazy Cat thing, and this is not as a solo artist, mind you. I was signed to Crazy Cat first with Columbia Records, under Tone Folk's jurisdiction, and uh, I was in a group called Desert Rose. So we're three groups deep. Signed. Come on. Okay. I'm signed. I'm roughing it out in Columbia. We don't even get a chance to get out, really, because here goes another situation. Mad Rap album drops. 
We all know the situation, what happened with that, unfortunately. It was still a great album, but it didn't do with the numbers that it was supposed to do. We're supposed to come out with fucking Desert Rose. Here and we've got this great idea. She sings, I rap. We both kind of like the same height. All that good shit that goes along with the, what everybody thinks is the perfect package in this game, supposedly. Oh, she spits, she sings, she do these songs. It's bullshit. It's all fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? So here we are, take pictures. Wow, wow, we do shows. We do all fucking types of shows. I'm fucking showed out with all these fucking groups. Right now, I should be like, at this point in my life, I didn't even get to me yet. Mind you, this is all Desert Rose, Poison Ivy, Mauve shit. I didn't even get to me yet. And I'm tired, <laughs> you know? But you can't be tired. You can't be fucking tired. You gotta just snap out of it every fucking day. You, you know how many rejections that is? You know how many fucking times I've been on the fucking ground like that? And you don't even know if you want to get up tomorrow and still do it again. But for some reason, I'm talking to this goddamn camera. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, so. Yeah, so, yeah, we doing our thing. Tesla Bowles, we're about to be off and profit. Off, uh, woo! Oh, and everyone thinks it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's so brilliant. The girl's going to be stars, okay. She, she meets someone, you know, he's kind of doing a little bit more than Crazy Cat, you know, I guess, the person. So it's kind of like, hey, you know, I'm going to bounce over here for a little bit and leave me in this deal for six fucking months I'm in this Columbia deal because I can't get out because you want to leave. And no problem, I'm all for it. But you should have spoke to me about it first. But that didn't go down. It was kind of like on some real monthly shice shit. But like, I'm so for you. I'm down for loving the heart and you know, living your life. But there's a way to do business. And there's a way to go about things. And you live and you learn. So basically she bounced, I'm signed, I can't get out. Choke no choke, yeah. It's choke no choke, let's go. Choke no choke, chicka choke no joke. Choke no joke, niggas choke no joke. I know this industry chick with tough laws. Yeah. When I got exclusives, I hit tough.